Have you ever made a leash for a mouse? Hi, I'm Walt Disney. I was born on December 5th, 1901 in Chicago, Illinois. When I was four, we moved to a farm in Mersling, Missouri. <coughs> One day, my father brought a can of black tar. I thought it was paint, so I, so I started painting the house with my little sister. I got in big, big trouble. When I was seven, I went to school. My sister was ready to go too. I thought that would be so embarrassing. I was class clown at school. Once I caught a mouse and made a leash out of string. We mo then we moved again. My father worked at a newspaper company in Kansas City. I helped out by delivering the <clears throat> newspapers early in the morning when I was nine years old. When I was 20, I teamed up with artist UB Erks. He was shy and serious, but very helpful in making many of my Oswald comics. We made what is called a laughogram. A laughogram is seven minutes long and everyone loves them. I worked on my own comic called Alice in Wonderland. It's about a girl in Wonderland. Before I finished, my company went bankrupt. I even had to sell my movie camera. I moved to um, Hollywood and teamed up with my brother and made Disney Brothers Studios. It was hard making new comics um, alone, so I hired three men and three women. One of the women was Lily Ann. On July 5th, we were married. Um, for our honeymoon, we went to Mount Rainier. I, I made color and sound, which um, impacts how you guys, you people watch TV today. I gave kids their own imagination by making my own imagination world in both California and Florida. Uh, whenever people came to my house, I would give them a little train ride. I provided Mickey's voice um, till 1946. I, I made, um, well, um, Disney World and said that it would not be completed as long as there is still imagination. Action. Have you ever represented, I don't know, about 106,000 people? Well, I have. Hi, I'm Rosie Brewster. I was not a person walking around, but I represented a woman who worked in factories during World War II. Women were needed to fill jobs that were typically a man's job. The Women's Advisory Committee found a way to get women in the workforce. I was part of this campaign and became the symbol of women in the workplace. The We Can Do It poster helped motivate, helped recruit women to work in factories. Artist Norman Rockwell's May t cover for the May 29, 1944 issue of the Saturday Evening Post was an illustration of a female Riveter with the name Rosie painted on her lunchbox. And that is how I got my name. Later, a song was written about me by Reed Evans and John Lowe. It was called Rosie the Riveter.
Women did anything to help. Women did anything to help the war effort in World War II. There were women who helped to produce tanks, ships, and other material. Some other jobs they did were to pick up scrap metal, sew underpants for the servicemen, be a secretary for the war department, and finally to be a riveter. When they bef before World War II, they could the women could only do certain jobs. They could be a school teacher, but not a principal, a nurse, but not a doctor. But now, job, women can do any jobs that are needed. And they got in factories. They had to wear no jewelry, put their hair up, and and didn't wear a dress like normal. They had to wear pants. I know what most of you are thinking. Hey, I can wear pants. Well, you see, in the olden days, and when I mean the olden days, I mean around World War II time, it was not common for girls to wear pants. But for not making up, for, but to make up for not wearing a dress or jewelry, they wore bright red lipstick. The U.S. Postal Service in the 1990s issued a stamp in the 1990s featuring an image of me. So all the people could remember the Rosies. So all the Rosies did me up to job, and I represent all those brave women. I'm Rosie the Road Girl, and like I always say, we can't do it. Have you ever been taken to school by police? Well, I have. Hi, my name is Rosie Wood. man to walk on the moon. My first words on the moon, it's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hi, my name is Neil Armstrong, and I was born in Wapakoneta, Ohio, on April 5th, 1930. I took my first flight at the age of six and became a pilot on my 16th birthday. I was active in Boy Scouts and earned the rank of Eagle Scout. In school, I studied aeronautical engineering and got a degree in 1953. I became a civil research pilot and flew more than 200 aircrafts, like jets to gliders and even helicopters. I served in the Korean War and was shot down once. I awarded three air medals I married my first wife, Janet, in January 1956, and we had three kids, and three kids. I was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1969. After NASA, I taught at the University of Cincinnati Aerospace Engineering. I remarried Carol Heldenite. I was asked to serve in the Presidential Commission on what caused the Shuttle Challenger explosion in 1986. I was the command pilot of Gemini 8 in 1966. I am the first civilian to fly in space. I landed on the moon in Eagle Lunar Module Buzz Aldrin 
and my moonwalk lasted two hours and 36 minutes. We collected 50 moon rocks and, and 50 moon rocks, planted the U.S. flag, and talked to President Nixon. An asteroid and a crater were named after me. I was instated in the Aerospace Walk of Honor, and the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. I I have become a symbol of mankind's courage. Did you know that Laura Ingalls Wilder left out the obey your husband part in her wedding vows? Hi, I'm Laura Ingalls Wilder. As born February 7th in 1867 in Tebbana, Wisconsin, her parents are Charles Philip Ingalls and Caroline May Ingalls, as the second of five children. I had three sisters, Mary, Carrie, and Grace, all would one day appear in my books. I moved with my family across America. In 1874, we moved from Pepin, Wisconsin to Long Grove, Minnesota. There we lived in a dugout home. Though, after two years, we had to move to Burr Oak, Iowa. There, my father partly owned a hotel. But eventually, we had to move back. Finally, we made our last move to Desmond, South Dakota. I attended regular schools when I could, but was half self-taught. At age 15, I got a teaching certificate and for three years taught at a country school. I was 18 when I married, and my husband, Almanzo Wilder, was 28. The first four years of our life together were the hardest we had ever experienced. Fire destroyed our home, hail and drought ruined our crops, and an illness gave Almanzo a lift. In 1986, my daughter was born. Her name was Rose. We moved to a town called Manfield in 1894. There we bought a 40-acre farm. We are active in our community and good friends with our neighbors. At age 16, Rose was asked by her Aunt Eliza to come home with her and finish college. In time, Rose became a famous writer. Soon, I started writing too. My books included my autobiography, The Little House series, P Pioneer Girl, and Farmer Boy. I'm best known for writing The Little House series. Finally, I changed the way many children write across America. Did you know I was six foot two inches? In the class picture, I've always had to stand in the back. Hi, my name is Julia Child. I was born on August 15, 1912. My parents are Julia and John McWilliams. I was full of energy and rode my bike everywhere. I have a brother, John, and a sister, Dorothy. I love to Dorothy. I love to read and play the piano. I went to Catherine Bronson Elementary and Smith College. In 1934, my mom died of kidney disease when I was 22. After getting married to, after getting married to my husband Paul, and I moved to France. We lived there. For, this is where I learned to cook. We lived there for 12 years. That's when I wrote the book, my first most famous cookbook, The Mastering, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. I never intended to have my I never intended to have my cook, my own cooking show, but after doing a demo on TV and talking about my cookbook, they offered me my own show called The French Chef. It was popular and fun. I try to inspire other chefs and people at home. If you mess up, it's okay. Cooking is fun. Bon appetit. Hi, my name is Helen Keller. I was born June 27, 1880 in Alabama. I was raised by my mom and dad, Kate and Arthur Keller. I had four siblings, three brothers and one sister. I got very sick when I was a child and had a bad fever for two weeks, which affected me by making me blind and deaf. When I was a kid, I was very wild and threw fits all the time because I could not communicate. My very first word was water. I learned this from my teacher, Ann Sullivan, put my hand under water and spelled it on my hand. 
I went to college at Harvard University and became a crusader after that. I was an American author, a political activist, and worked for blind and deaf charities. I had many other important jobs too. When I grew up, I did not have a husband because people back then with disabilities often could not get married. Throughout my life, I met very famous people, like every US president in my time. Since I was an American author, I published 14 books during my life. I was the first blind and deaf person to ever write a book. I traveled all around the world and gave speeches in 25 different countries. I was very famous for overcoming challenges and being courageous. In Robinson, I was, I, I was born on January 13, 1919 in Cary, Georgia. But, I had two brothers and one sister. I was the youngest of five children. My mother left, my father left my mother. My mother, so she had to take care of me and the children. My grandparents have once been slaves. I like to be the best in school and I was only unhappy asked for the day I lost a childhood friend. I was only 16 months old when my family moved to California. I was the first African American to play Major League Baseball. Um, Major League Baseball. I became a soldier. I was sent to Fort Riley in 19... In 1942, I was friends with Joe Lewis, the heavyweight boxing champion. Um, I'm named after President Teddy Roosevelt. My middle name is Roosevelt. My jersey number is the only number in we that is retired in Major League history. <laughs> I married my wife, Rachel, in 1940. I retired from baseball and became a businessman. Me and Rachel had three children, Jackie Jr., Sharon, and David. I excelled in college, basketball, football, and I found did a bank called National Freedom National Bank in the city of Harlem. I got the President Medal of Freedom Award when I passed away. This is a gift for people who made who made the country better. I fought for the right of African Americans. Did you know I made a public church? Hi, my name is Paul Rear. My brother was Thomas and my parents were Deborah Hitchmore and Paul Sevier. We moved to England from France. My uncle Simon lived in England. Later on, my uncle Simon thought we would have better opportunities in America, so he gave us a little money and sent us on ship bridges bound for Boston, Massachusetts. Luckily, the captain of the ship made me an apprentice of a goldsmith and serviceman. I changed my name to Paul, Paul Rubier since my name was a Paul Rubier, like my dad's, which was too hard to pronounce. My father sent me to a writing school when I was six years old. I joined my father as a goldsmith and silversmith, but not as an apprentice after I, after I finished school when I was 12 years old. When I was 19, my father suddenly died, leaving me no will to estate. The law said no person under 20 could run a business, so my mom took over our business. In the spring of 1756, I joined the Massachusetts militia when they were still appointed to the British. My regiment marched home since the food supplies were low and I was never supposed to fight on the side of the British. Back in Boston, I settled down and took over the business. I started looking for a wife. I found a young woman named Sarah Owen. Just nine months later, our first child was born, which was a girl. I'm most famous for my midnight ride that alerted the Americans of the British attack. Newspapers in Boston called me cruel and thought 
our international. Another newspaper called me one of the most earliest and most persistent patriots. I also might have taken part in the Boston Tea Party. My, my skills as a silversmith set the standard for every American that followed me. I also built the copper hull of Robert Fulton's first steamboat. Have you ever wondered about, uh, about all of this? Good, well, goodbye, folks. See you later. I was in charge of finding missing Union soldiers. Hi, my name's Clara Barton. I was born on December 25th, 1821. I was born in North Oxford, Massachusetts. My parents' names are Stephen and Sarah Barton. I have four other siblings. They taught me how to read and write while I was still young, but I didn't do very well in school. Growing up on, the, up on a farm, I learned about hard work. I had lots of chores, from milking the cows early in the morning to chopping wood and taking care of sick animals. Growing up was not easy for me. There were so many people watching over me, and my siblings called me top because of my lisp and stutter. I was an American teacher, nurse, and a humanitarian. During the American Civil War, I was in charge of finding missing Union soldiers. I also helped several hospitals in Virginia. I got married to Avery Hill, but I didn't have any children. I became very ill. I traveled to Europe to regain my health. By, 17, by 1876, my health had become so bad that I couldn't leave my bed or my home. By 1877, I finally recovered my health. When I was in Europe, I met Dr. Louis Appia. I and I heard about the International Red Cross. I then participated in relief working in the Amer in the, in Europe during the Franco Prussian War. I was nearly fifty six and wanted to bring my European experience to America to assist starving and sick citizens. As a woman, I worked in several battles. I helped the homeless after the Ohio River flood. I was known as the founder and the first president of the American Red Cross. I helped establish the first national cemetery at Andersonville, Georgia. I supported nurses in Jacksonville, Florida during the yellow fever epidemic. Hello, my, my name is Sally K. Ryan, and I'm the first American woman in space. I have dark brown hair and blue eyes. I was born May 26, 1951. My parents' names are Carol and Belle Ryan. My sister is Karen Ryan. When she was born, I could not pronounce Karen, so I just called her Bear, and the name stuck. Even as an adult, she is still very bright to everyone who knows her. When I was young, I would play football with the boys in the street. I was really good, and, I, and the boys liked me playing with them. I was usually picked first for the team. I also really enjoyed playing tennis. Because of all the outdoor sports, I was a very healthy infant child. I really enjoyed all the outdoor sports. But my favorite indoor activity was reading. I really enjoyed to read. When I was in fourth grade and Bear was in second, my, our parents took us on a trip to see lots of places, such as Europe. They thought we could learn a lot from our travels, and our principal agreed. I skipped fifth grade and headed off to sixth because I had tested ahead of my age group in reading and math. Because of my skill in tennis, I won a scholarship to Westlake School for Girls in Los Angeles. After high school, I headed off to Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania. In October 1977, NASA decided to interview 208 people, and I was one of them. I had to work very hard and do my best. They were looking, NASA was looking for people who were smart and not rattled easily. After many months, I finally got the call saying that I had been chosen as one of NASA's new astronauts. I would have to work very hard and do my best. I had to learn to be pulled around in, in water, get first aid, and, and how to space support. The training took many years, and I had to do my best and work very hard. After waiting many months, I, I, fin I finally flew to space for my first time and became the first American woman in space. On June 18, 1983, 
2003, in, two, in the year 2003, I was voted into the astronaut, na, the astronaut Hall of Fame. My first project was for kids called KidSat that I developed with the help of NASA. KidSat brought a space shuttle experience to middle school classrooms. I live with my life partner, Tamil Shanahi, a girl, a woman I met during a tennis match. I play with my bat, not my fist. Hi, I'm Jackie Robinson. I was born on January 31st, 1919. My dad walked out the door and I was just a baby. I was the youngest of f five brothers. When my dad walked out the door, my mom had to take care of me and my five brothers. I played many sports. My wife was Rachel Islump. I, pl I was served in the Army. I played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. My coach was Brent Tripley. I played a total of 1,382 games, and I played, I played with white people. I played 1,382 games, and my batting average was 311. I, I, I broke the color barrier. I hope people can be more brave like me someday. Hi, I'm Jackie Robinson. I was born January 31st. 1919 in Cairo, Georgia. My parents were Mally and Jerry Robinson. When I was one, my dad left to find a better life for me and my family, but never came back. When I was young, I was not brave. I would sleep in my mom and dad's bed. Even when my mom tried to bribe me, I wouldn't budge. When I was eight, one of the scariest moments of my life happened. I got in a rock fight with a white girl's father. Eventually, the mother came and broke it up. I went to college in 1939 at UCLA. In 1942, I was drafted in the Army. And once I got out, I married Rachel Issam in 1946. I had three children. My first child was born in 1946. His name was Jackie Robinson, Jr. In 1947, I played my first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. That day, I broke the color barrier in baseball. In 1950, I had my only daughter, Sharon Robinson. In 1952, I had my last and third child. His name was David Robinson. I was, on, I was there for the whole world to judge, and that's why I was known for showing perseverance and leading the way for all the other African Americans and being brave. Also, simply being the best. I am Jackie Robinson. Nothing valuable can be lost by taking time. Have you ever wondered who came up with that quote? Well, I did. Hi, my name is Abraham Lincoln. I was born on February 12, 1809 in Kentucky. When I was a kid, my family moved to Illinois and Indiana. When I was only nine, my mother died and it was hard on us. When I was a kid, I was known for telling funny stories, but I was famous for being a practical jokester. Because I had to help support my family, I only had a total of one year of school. I first started working on a riverboat hauling freight down the down the old Mississippi to New Orleans. I also worked as a shopkeeper and postman. I, in 1834, I started my political career as a state legislator in Illinois. After, after that, I was elected into the U.S. House of Representatives. Af, also, after I was elected into the U.S. House of Representatives, I was elected 16th President of the United States. My leadership in the American Civil War helped the North defeat the South. In 1863, I ordered a draft which for the first time forced the men to fight in the Army. Also, I paved the way for African Americans and to end slavery. If I look familiar to you, it's probably because since I had such leadership skills when I was president, that they put my face on uh, the penny and the five dollar bill. Or you see my Lincoln Memorial.
July 24, 1897, in Atkinson, Kansas. My parents were Amy and Edwin. My sister's name is Miriam. One day I wanted to go on a roller coaster, but I was too small. My sister and I made one instead from the roof of the tool shed with wooden boards. I got my first gun, which was a rifle, and I was nine. High school was difficult for a learner. I had focused on my studies rather than my classes rather than my rather than making friends or playing sports. After I graduated, I attended a I enrolled at Occitan, a finishing school where I learned proper behavior and manners. While life was exciting, it was not without troubles. At one point, I had to sell some. I sold my airstrip for my parents financially. I was the first woman to fly solo across North America and the Atlantic. I earned my pilot's license and set a world record flying higher than any other woman. I married my manager, GP Pilot. Uh, I taught young students about aviation. Electra 10E from Miami through parts of South America, Africa, South Asia, and arrived at Lee New Jersey. We flew 22,000 miles. July 2nd, 1937, due to cloud coverage, disrupting communications, and running out of fuel, we disappeared over over the Central Pacific Ocean near Howland Island. A quote I said, After midnight, the moon set, and I was alone with the stars. I have often said that the lure of wine is the lure of food, and I need no other flight to convince me of that. The reason flyers fly is the aesthetic appeal of life. Hi, I'm Buffalo Bill. Did you know I killed 4,280 bison? I was born on February 26, 1846, near Leclerc, Iowa. I grew up on a farm and had seven siblings. Our, our teacher, Miss Helen Goodrich, taught us the basics of reading and arithmetic to a handful of other students. My father Isaac was dead because people thought he was an abolitionist, but thankfully he survived. I, I was a pony express rider, the youngest person to kill an Indian after I killed one, on a cattle drive, and a scout all within the ages of 9 and 14. Did you know I married Louisa Frederici? I tried to strike rich in the California gold rush, but didn't find any gold. I was in the American Civil War. I also was an actor and had over 10 shows starring me. 
I was an Indian fighter on the Great Plains, and one time, and the reason they were attacking us was because they were forcing them off our land. I had a show called Buffalo Bill's Wild West in the Congress of Rough Riders. I was a Pony Express rider, and one time a group of Indians attacked our cattle drive. Uh, I was a soldier in the American Civil War, and the reason I killed 4,280 bison was was to feed the railroad builders. I hope you'll be more like me someday. Hi, I'm George Washington. Did you know I was the very first president of the United States? I was born on February 22nd, 1732 in Burgess's, Virginia. I moved a lot, but the last place I moved was Mount Vernon. I was a tall, athletic boy. I loved to ride horses. I have five siblings, one sister and four brothers. Their names are Samuel, John, and Charles. They were younger. My elder brother was Lawrence, and my younger sister was Betty. I moved to Mount Vernon when my older brother Lawrence got married to Anne Fairfax, whose family was rich. When I looked at Mount Vernon, I went fox hunting into fancy balls. When I was a teenager, I got a job as a surveyor, and I was very good at this job. I married Martha Curtis at age 27. Martha had two children. Their names are Jackie and Patsy, who both died at a very young age. Me and Martha raised Jackie's son and daughter after he died. In 1776, me and other founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. The Americans won the war the Revolutionary War in 1781. The Treaty of Paris was signed in 1783. I became the first president on April 14, 1789. I led a short surprise attack near Princeton and found out short surprise attack methods work. The British surrendered to me and my army at Saratoga. Me and my army crossed the frozen Delaware River to surprise attack the Hesitant. I won the last battle of the war in Yorktown. The American and French troops surrounded the British. I won the Revolutionary War in 1781, but the Treaty of Paris wasn't signed until 1783. I was the first president of the United States. I was a good leader because I was polite, cheered people on, helpful, and took care of my team. At least I can do is speak out for those who can't speak for themselves. Hi, I'm Jane Goodall. I, I was born April 3, 1934 in London, England. My fa mother, Van, wrote novels. My father, Mortimer, was an engineer who later became a race car driver. I loved animals from a very young age. I was so interested in what they did and how. My father gave me a toy. But it wasn't a soft kitten or dog. It was a huge chimpanzee. Many thought I would be afraid of it, but I loved it. I was also so curious how to find out how chickens lay eggs. So one day, I sat in the chicken coop for five hours. My parents called the cops because they thought I was lost. When they found me, I was in, in the chicken. They realized I wanted to learn about animals. When they found me in the chicken coop, they realized I wanted to learn about animals. By the time I graduated, I still didn't really know what I wanted to be, but I did know what, that I wanted to study animals in Africa and write about them. I, w I was married in 1964. I gave birth to a son named Hugo Eric Lewis, known as Grub. Now I am the most famous scientist in the world. 20 million people watched as I led them through the John Lee jungle and introduced them to my chimps. I saved millions of chimpanzees, and I believe that teaching children about chimpanzees, it encouraged them to support Congress effects. I realized that many people were harming chimpanzees. I have received many awards and medals for my work to protect our planet and its animals. Now I travel to speak to many people. I want to want them to know that every human or animal matters and can make a difference.
Did you know that Harriet Tubman saved 70 enslaved people? Hi, I'm Harriet Tubman. I was born in 1820 in Maryland. I was an enslaved person. That meant I was not free. Even as a child, I had to work for my master. When I was a teenager, I went to a store. There was another slave there who ran from its overseer. The overseer grabbed a two-pound weight and threw it at him and missed him and hit Harriet Tubman instead. In 1814, 1844, I married John Tubman, a free black man. I also dreamed of being a free black woman. In 1849, I learned that I was going to be sold to by my master. I went to a home of a white woman who hid me until it was safe. I was now on my way to North using the Underground Railroad. I bravely led about 70 slaves to freedom. I am a hero for being so brave. I am the best hero because I saved enslaved people and gave them their freedom. Hi, have you ever been turned down and told that you couldn't do something you wanted to try? I'm Dr. Seuss, and I can definitely relate to that. I was born on March 2nd, 1904. I grew up in a family that loved wordplay. As a child, my mother was a baker, and she would make up rhymes listing pie flavors. Like most people in my town, I grew up speaking German and English. When I graduated high school and went to Dartmouth College, I had a very hard time. I even got voted least likely to succeed. Eventually, things got a little better. Most people who knew me thought I didn't take anything serious. They thought I was funny or hysterical, or they thought my drawings were weird, but I didn't really care. One of the buildings in my town belonged to my grandfather. It was called Kalmak and Diesel. It was a brewery, but eventually it got shut down because there was no more alcohol allowed. I, I, I loved drawing and writing books. I was an author and illustrator who changed children's books forever. All of my books rhymed. In 1927, I married Helen, Helen Palmer. The first time we met, she, she looked over my shoulder when I was drawing, and she said, that's a very fine flying cow. 1937, I started to publish my first books. A few years after that, me and, I ended marriage with Helen, Paul, Helen Palmer. In 1957, I published The Cat in the Hat. The people I worked with asked me to write a children's book that was easy to read and that children would love. So I got two words in my head, cat and hat. People, that, po people thought my books weren't really good for children and they thought that my drawings and illustrations weren't good. But I didn't really care and I kept trying. I kept writing books and kept trying. <laughs> um, eventually, People thought the books were great for children and it felt like I was a true artist. As I wrap this up, I just want to tell you, you are you, that is truer than true. There's nobody else who is you than you. Bye. See you later. Hi, I'm Dolores Porta. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. My birth came during the Great Depression and national economic downturn that stained the ability of many families to earn a living. This happened near 1929 to 1939. This recession we're seeing becoming the deepest financial depression in the Western world. Businesses, factories, mines closed, leaving several million job workers without jobs, including my dad. As a child, I lived in Stockton, California. I have an older, I have an older brother named Juan and a younger brother named Marshall. We were born in Dawson. My mom and dad were also known as activists. My mom was also no, known for her kindness. She ran a hotel, and if people were poor and didn't have enough money to stay, she would let them stay for free. When I was five, my parents divorced. My father and other relatives mined coal in a small town of about 9,000 people. My dad also picked vegetables for a living. For the first time, they faced the sting of racism being targeted because they were Mexican Americans. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about my adult life. I married Ralph Head, and then a couple years later, we had divorced. Along the way, I began a relationship with Richard Chavez, Caesar's brother. I gave birth to four more children. Their names were Juanita, Maria, Ricky, and Camille. Camille. Camila. As I made a big march that had over 340 mile march from Delena to the stars of the state capital. That was a really long march. 
I got caught in the rush and I was beaten to the ground. An emergency vehicle came to rescue me. An emergency surgery where doctors came to save my life. I had suffered many broken ribs and a ruptured spleen. I lost so much blood that I probably could have died, but luckily I didn't. I won a Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama in 2012, the highest honor in the U.S. I'm still alive until this day. Have you ever made a famous oatmeal? Hi, I'm Albert Einstein. I was born in Ulm, Germany on March 4th, 1879. I was the first of three children. I had a brother and a sister. As a child, my parents worried that my head was too big. I learned to speak at the age of three. I went, I went to a Catholic school. When, when I was 15, my parents moved to, my family moved to Milan, Italy. I stayed behind to continue school. But when I dropped out of school, my parents worried. I promised I would teach myself, and that is just what I did. On June 2, 1919, I married Maliva Merrick. One year later, my mom died. In 1905, my, I made the th theory of relativity, E equals MC squared. I also introduced the theory that light travels in particles, not waves. My science has led to quantum science. I, I won a Nobel Prize when I made the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons when electromagnetic radiation hits a material. The photoelectric effect is what helped me to, to show that, the, that light traveled in particles, not waves. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Imagination is more important than all. Hi, I'm Amelia Earhart. I was one of the first woman pilots and did incredible solo flights. While still a child, I displayed an adventurous and independent nature. My father was a railroad lawyer and my mother came from an affluent family. After the death of my grandparents, my family started to spend their upward and then my father's alcoholism. In 1918, I left junior college to become a nurse's aide in Toronto. After the war, I joined the PREEN program in New York City. The left after my parents subsisted, I moved to California with them. In California, I experienced my first plane ride. It an experience that inspired me to take flying lessons. And in 1921, I bought my first plane, a Kenner Alistair. Two years later, I earned my license. Ah, and during this time, promoters thought to have a pilot fly across the Atlantic. I was selected. On July 17, 1928, I departed on a seaplane and became a celebrity. I'm, he wrote tons of books on my flying adventures and married my publisher, George Palmer Palmer. But I continued my career under my maiden name. I then wanted to fly across the world. So I, I departed on a seaplane and, and was declared lost at sea on July 19th, 1937. I was known for encouraging people to reject conscription social norms and I founded an organization of women pilots. And one of the things that I said that inspired people was, women like men should try and do the impossible. And if they fail, let the failure be a challenge to others. Hello, I'm Harriet Tillman. Did you know my original name was Araminta Harriet Ross? I changed it on later in life to honor my mother, Harriet Ross, and my husband, John Tillman. I was born on a plantation in Bucktown, Maryland around 1820, but no one knows my exact date of birth. I was named Araminta Ross, but my parents called me Minty. Physical violence was a part of my daily life. I once remember a time I got lashed five times before breakfast. When I was about six years old, I was sent to watch my neighbor's baby. If the baby woke up, I got whipped. When I was about 12 years old, an overseer threw a two pound weight at me. He was aiming at a runaway though. The weight hit me in the head. I suffered from severe injury, severe headaches, and intense dream states, also seizures, because of my injury. My master's son sold three of my sisters to the South. 
my childhood was very tough. In 1844, I married John Tenman. When I escaped slavery, my husband refused to come with me. He thought I'd died, so later remarried. In 1849, when I escaped slavery, a white person who also didn't like slavery told me about some other people who helped me get to freedom safer. That was how I found out about the Underground Railroad. Between 1850 and 1860, I made 19 trips back to the South and freed over 300 slaves with the help of the Underground Railroad. I became a cook, nurse, and an armed scout and spy for the Northern Army in the Civil War. Since my late husband remarried, I married Nelson Davis in 1869. He was a Civil War veteran. We adopted a baby girl named Gertie. I was one of the most famous Underground Railroad conductors. I was a brave and daring woman. I was an Underground Railroad conductor and an armed scout and spy for the Northern Army. I led so many people to freedom, I was called Moses, like from the Bible. I went back to the South many times and freed over 300 slaves. I risked my life many times. I was the first woman to lead a armed expedition in the war. I led the Kambahi River Raid, which set free over 700 slaves in South Carolina. I was widely known and well respected when I was alive and still am today. Don't forget, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have within you the strength and passion to reach for the stars and change the world. Have an amazing day and remember what I told you. My name is Saka Julia. I changed the world. I was born in 1788, surrounded by the Rocky Mountains in the Salmon River region. I camped near Snake River with my tribe. I was called Bird Girl or Bird Woman. I wore a dress and leggings made of deer skins when it was cold. I left one night to find my brother who was hunting. I was kidnapped in 1800. I was sold to a French-Canadian trapper who made me one of his wives. My father was a Shushan chief, and my brother was called Kinaway. I had another brother and sister. My husband and I lived among the Hidasta and Mandan Indians in the upper Missouri River area. I had a baby named Pomp. I had another baby. A few years later, I had another baby named Lisette. Most of December was spent building Fort Clapsat. I'm famous for the Lewis and Clark expedition. I helped find food when the explorers were hungry. I also helped translate when we met Indians. There was a huge storm when we were on the expedition. The Lewis and Clark expedition helped the United States settle a huge region like Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. We ran out of food and bought two dozen dogs from Indians and ate them all. I died in 1809. Now my likeness is on a $1 coin. This is how I changed the world. Bye for now. Have you ever heard that I, Theodore Roosevelt, won the Nobel Peace Prize for mediating the Russo-Japanese War? No. Well then, have you heard that I, that I was a lieutenant of the Rough Rider Regiment that I, which I led into battle? Hi, my name is Theodore Roosevelt. However, people call me Teddy. Allow me to tell you about myself. On October 27th, 1858, I was born into a wealthy family. I got my first horse in 1865, a baby named General Grant. I rode him whenever I had the chance. However, my life was not as happy as you may think, for I was always a sickly child with asthma. In 1873, I went to Harvard College. I graduated in 1880 as a lawyer. In the same year, I married Alice Hathaway Lee. Unfortunately, in 1882, my wife and mother died on the same day. I spent 1890 to 1896 grieving in the badlands of North Dakota, spending most of my time fishing and hunting big game. I even captured an outlaw. On a trip to London, I married Edith Carroll. In 1898, I led the Rough Rider Regiment into battle. When I returned, I ran for governor of New York State. 
I was governor for two years until I ran for president in 1900. Once president, I won the Nobel Peace Prize for meditating the Russo-Japanese War. I was also nicknamed the Trust Buster for forcing the dissolution of the Great Railroad combustion, combustion in the Northwest. I spent the rest of my life with my six children, Alice, Theodore, Kermit, Ethel, Edith, and Quentin. Hello, my name is Sacagawea. Most people know me as the guide for the Lewis and Clark expedition. Most people don't know that I had a tough childhood before we set out on our journey. I was born in 1788 in the area now called Idaho. I was the daughter of the Shoshone chief. My tribe was nomadic. I learned the languages of the other tribes we met. At 11, I was captured by the Hadassah tribe. That same year, I was sold to a fur trader named Toussaint Charbonneau. When I was captured, I learned the Hadassah language. Toussaint also taught me French and English as we traded our furs. I married Toussaint Charbonneau at the age of 12. We had a son named Jean Baptiste in 1804. Jean traveled with us on our expedition. Lewis and Clark called Jean Pompey and Pomp because of his chubby cheeks. The expedition began in winter of 1804 and reached the Pacific Ocean in November of 1805. I carried Pumpy on my back during the 4,500 mile journey. Lewis and Clark named a river after me. a statue of Pomp and I in North Dakota. I taught Lewis and Clark how to hunt, fish, and gather in my native land. On the expedition, I traded my family belt for a fur coat for President Jefferson. After reaching the Pacific Ocean, I returned home and lived with the Shoshone. My brother was now the chief of our tribe. A couple years later, I gave birth to a daughter named Lizette. I used my translation skills to trade with the other tribes. I lived with my tribe for the rest of my life. Did you ever want to be a president? Hi, I am Gerald R. Ford, your 38th president. And I was born on July 14, 1937. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska, and my birth parents are Dorothy and Leslie King. When my birth parents divorced, I left with my mother. She got married to Gerald Ford. I graduated from Ger Grand Rapids South High School in 1931. Then I began attending the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. I played football on the school's football team. And I, as a football player, I learned teamwork and self-control. At Michigan, I studied economics and political science. 
I graduated in 1935, and in 1938, I attended Yale Law School. I finished law school in 1941. Soon after, I began working at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. Two major football teams tried to recruit me, but I turned them down. Instead, I chose to coach sports and become a lawyer. I coached football and boxing at Yale. Later, I went back to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and my, my friend and I opened a law office. I joined the Navy in 1942, and I fought in World War II and became a lieutenant commander. I got married in 1948, and my wife Elizabeth and I had four children. After leaving the Navy, I returned to Michigan in 1946. Then I served in Congress for 25 years, and I was liked for being ideologically flexible. I won the role of House Minority Leader. After Nixon resigned because of the Watergate scandal, I became president. I chose Nelson Rockefeller as my vice president, and I hoped that he would bring strength to my administration. I invited the press, Congress from both parties, and many others that were shunned by off by Nixon to a party. In September 1975, I survived two separate assassination attempts. Then I was given a bulletproof jacket. I will all I will be remembered for the actions I took and the greatness that came from them. These are the attributes of my character and principles I live with honesty, integrity, and selflessness that will always endure and inspire. Betty and my, and my wife and I had three rules. Tell the truth, work hard, and come to dinner on time. Do you know what I want to say the next clip from Inside a Sea Monster? Hi. I'm Harry Houdini. I was born on March 24, 1874 in Budapest, Hungary as Air Fleece. My name changed to Air Fleece when I immigrated at age four. I'm Jewish and the Hungarians treated Jews as second class citizens. It was hard for my parents to get jobs so we were poor. Five years after I immigrated, when I was nine, I had a backyard surface and called myself the Prince of the Air. A magician named Robert Houdin, who was already famous, and my mother, Cecilia Reese, called me Airy, which sounded like Harry, so I added an I to Houdin, and ta-da, Harry Houdini was born. Around age 19, my brother Theo, who was 17, and I worked as partners in magic. We called ourselves the Brothers Houdini. During my show while doing a metamorphosis trick, Theo messed up, so I fired him afterwards. I married Beatrice Raymond. Her real name was Wilhelmina Rayner, but people called her Bess. She was part of a song and dance act called the Floral Sisters. Bess brought me luck. I never had any before I married her. She and I had a dog named Charlie. We she and I went touring around Europe and America. While touring in Europe, I went to Alhambra, the most impressive stage I performed at. I am famous for my talent of magic. Some of my famous tricks were hiding from straight jackets. Another is hiding from handcuffs. I am also talented with card tricks. I teleport with the brick all tricks. I have a metamorphosis trick. I can also make an elephant disappear. Never tell an audience how good you are, they will soon find out themselves. The only thing we all have to fear is fear itself. 
Hi, my name is Franklin D. Roosevelt. I was born to a wealthy family in Hyde Park, New York, January, January 30th, 1882. I had a happy childhood with many hobbies such as shooting, horseback riding, photography, and stamp collecting. At age 14, I went to Groton School in Massachusetts. Groton made boys ready for America's best universities, but I didn't really want to flunk it, didn't I? Life at Groton was difficult because I started two years later than usual, which meant, which meant everyone had already made friends and personal connections. I wasn't the best at sports either. For football, I was only chosen for the seventh team. I was also bullied for being on time and being a good student, but soon things started to change. One day, Teddy Roosevelt, a distant cousin of mine, came to speak at Groton, entertaining us on stories when he was a New York police commissioner. I also started to make friends. In football, I slipped up to the second team. Thankfully, I graduated Groton with a happy heart and excellent education. Ni September 1900, I attended Harvard University to study history and government. After I graduated Harvard, I attended the Columbia Law School, which introduced me to politics. 1910, I was asked, I was asked to run for state senator by the Democratic Party, starting my career in politics. At the age of 39, Disaster struck. After a fun day of swimming, I felt ill, so I just did the sensible thing. I went to bed early. The next day, my back was in pain and I could hardly move my legs. It took three doctors to figure out I had a disease called polio. It seemed I would never walk again, but but that didn't stop me from trying. I went to Warm Spring, Georgia, which I later turned into a polio treatment center. A little after that, I was fitted with two leg braces that locked in the knee. Also tried some few techniques of my own, such as fake walking, and hanging from the ceiling. Although I never regained the full use of my legs, I never let that slow me down, even though I sort of already do go slow. During the Great Depression, I was elected as the nation's 32nd president. It was a tough time for our nation. The stock market had crashed and banks were shutting down. M many people were out of work and unable to provide for their families. They were scared and many were without hope. As president, I worked hard to restore confidence in American people through a radio broadcast called Fireside Chats. During these chats, I let the people know what was going on and how I was trying to help them through this difficult time. I spearheaded many public work projects through what became known as the Alphabet Agencies, 
These agencies kept people working through conservation through conservation and other work building projects. The new roads, bridges, hospitals, and dams were built during this time. I also put bank holidays in place to restore confidence to the nation's banking system. All these efforts made me popular with the American people. And I was the only president to be elected to four terms of office. September 1939, German tanks rolled into Poland, starting World War II in Europe. 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, starting sinking five battleships and killing 2,235 servicemen. It was a very shocking moment for America. Rather than cowering in fear, the very next day, I addressed both houses of Congress, asking them to declare war on the Japanese Empire. Thus, America entered World War II. April 12, 1945, my death was a very huge shock to America. I was one of the few presidents to die in office. Thousands of Americans missed their president. Some even said I was the greatest president because I was creating and creative in times of fear and uncertainty. How can you show courage and creativity in these troubled times like I did? Hello, have you ever been dressed in blind? I have. Hi, I'm Helen Keller. I was born in Tanzinga, Alabama, June 20. 1880. My parents were Arthur and Kate Keller. I have four siblings. My sister Mildred, brother Philip, and two brothers from my father's first marriage. At the age of two, I became very sick. When my fever broke, I was less deaf and blind. At the time, there were not many schools for the blind, so I did not attend school at a young age. When I was five years old, a woman named Annie Sullivan began tutoring me and helped me learn sign language. Then later, she would become my best friend. Later in the 1900s, no deaf or blind woman had ever completed college. I was determined to be the first, and I was. When I was 36, I fell in love with Peter Fagan but had three failed oplevids. <laughs> I starred in a film, wrote many books, and over 500 articles. Then after World War II, I went to see the blind soldiers. I inspired them and gave them hope. Then I began speaking for hands clap moments and began working for an American Foundation for the Blind. I dedicated my life to help others. I hope you too can. <laughs> I know a lot of astronauts look up to me. Hi, my name is Neil Armstrong. I was born August 5th, 1930. And my first play in 1936. I was just six years old. I love playing so much my room was filled with them. I dreamed my whole life of being an astronaut and guess what? My dream came true. I love flying planes so much I got my pilot's license before my driver's. In 1947, I entered Purdue University. I also had a lot of training at NASA schools, too. Did you know my wife died in 1962? It was a sad day. Guess what? I was the first person to walk on the moon. While I was on the moon, I put the U.S. flag where I stepped. I was on the spacecraft Apollo 11 with two friends, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. It was a long time, but it was fun and a little hard. I also flew a craft called X-15 flying 50 miles above Earth. I spent a lot of time away from home giving speeches. While I was on the moon, I said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Remember, keep trying and never give up. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Crockett, also known as the King of the Wild Frontier. I was born in a simple log cabin which is now east of Tennessee. I grew up with four brothers and four sisters. I was 
When I was 12, I wanted a cattle drive to earn money for the family. I was 13 when I ran away from home. A farmer let me live at his house for a couple of years. I was 15, almost 6 feet tall now, and, and I spent lots of time working for the farmer. I borrowed the farmer's rifle and figured out I was a good shot. When I returned, my family did not recognize me. I was 27 when I married Polly. Polly and I had three children. When, But life on the frontier was never predictable. Polly Crockett had gotten sick and died. Soon I decided to marry again. My second wife was a widow named Elizabeth Patton with two children. We had four more together. I ran for Congress and won three times. My friend came to me with an idea. He wanted me to run for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives. I won my second try. I fought against Andrew Jackson over the Indian Removal Act. Even though we despised each other, I saved him from being assassinated. The Mexicans and Americans fought over Texas, which caused the battle at the Alamo. When the Mexican army attacked, I helped defend the Alamo. When they got in, I defended the church, and when I ran out of ammo, I used my gun as if it was a bat. I am a brave man, and I fight for what I think is right, so make sure you're right and go ahead.